Hi, welcome to Father Games. Today we're looking at the 1 to 4 player zoo building game, Ark Nova. Now before going over the rules, I quickly need to say that there is a solo mode to this game. I won't be going over that in this video, but it's on the back of the rulebook if you need the rules for that. It's very easy to figure out once you know the rules for the base game, that's why I won't be covering it in this video. And also to keep this video at a reasonable length, I won't be going over every card and every icon on the board, but there's a very helpful glossary and icon overview included in the game to cover all of those in detail. But if you have any questions with that or anything else in the game, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer anything I can. But other than that, let's take a look at how to play. In Ark Nova, one to four players are trying to construct the most successful scientifically engineered zoo. The player whose zoo has the highest combination of appeal and conservation points when the end of game is triggered wins the game. To set up, start by putting out the game board in the center of the table and add the organizers full of tokens beside it. Next, add the deck of zoo cards face down to the highlighted spot on the board and deal out one card face down to each of the six highlighted spots on the board. After that, place the break token on the space on the board that represents a player count and deal out one random bonus tile to each of the four highlighted spots on the board here, returning the leftovers to the organizer. After that, the association board can be set up. To do this, place it near the game board, leaving room for cards above and cards below the board. Next, place one of each of the five partner zoo tokens on their highlighted spaces on the board and one of each of the three different university tokens on their highlighted spaces. Now to finish the setup of this board, conservation cards need to be added. To do this, take the deck of base conservation cards and deal out four cards to the bottom of the board for a four player game, otherwise deal out three. Now this final step is only followed in a two player game. If playing with just two players, cover up the leftmost spot of the left card, the middle spot of the middle card, and the rightmost spot of the right card, as well as the three leftmost spots on the board here. These spaces will not be used in a two player game. After that's done, each player receives a double sided zoo map, and for the first game it's recommended that each player uses the zoo map labeled map A, but players can use any starting zoo map they'd like. After that, do any initial setup that's written on your zoo map here. For example, map A requires you to place a 3 space enclosure face down on this space and a kiosk here. After that, each player chooses a color and grabs all tokens of that color. Each player then places 7 action cubes on the highlighted spots here, 3 of their association workers on their highlighted spots here, and each player's 4th association worker can be placed on their board's notepad along with 25 money tokens from the supply. Now before drawing each player's starting hand, the first player needs to be determined. Choose a first player randomly, I recommend the player who owns the most animals, and after that each player can then put out the three counters on each of the three tracks on the game board. The green track here is a conservation track, and each player puts their counter on the zero space here. The blue track is a reputation track, each player places a counter on the one space of this track here. And finally the third track is the appeal track, the first player puts their counter on the zero space, the second player in clockwise order puts the counter on the one space, and so on. After that, cards can be drawn. Of the drawn cards, each player keeps four of the eight drawn zoo cards, discarding the unchosen cards. Of the two final scoring cards, one will be discarded either at the end of the game or if a player reaches 10 conservation points. And for the action cards, each player receives one of each type of card and places the animals card underneath the one space on their zoo map and shuffle the remaining four action cards and place one underneath each of the four remaining spots here. All action cards are placed with the blue side face up. After all that is done, the six cards on the game board can be flipped face up and the game can begin with the first player. Starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise from there, each player chooses just one of five possible actions. Each of the five actions is represented by one of the five action cards each player has below their zoo map. Players can either play animal cards from their hand, draw more zoo cards, build a building on their zoo map, play a sponsor card from their hand, or perform an association task. To perform any of the five actions, the current player looks at their five action cards below their zoo map and chooses the card that matches the action they want to complete. The number above the chosen card will determine how strong the action will be. For example, if a player chose the animal's action and the animal action card was under the two strength space on their board, then they could play one animal card from their hand. If instead that player chose the animal's action and the action card was under the 5 strength space on their board, then they could play two animal cards on that turn instead. After any action is chosen, the matching action card is placed underneath the 1 strength space to the far left of that player's board, and all other cards shift to the right one space, increasing in strength. 
If a player doesn't want to do any of the five actions, then as an action they can instead choose a card to be put on the far left under the one string space on their board, like we just saw, but instead of doing the action listed on the card, they instead receive one X token from the supply. X tokens can be spent to increase the strength of a chosen action card by one strength per each token spent. Each player's action cards are double sided, that's because action cards can be upgraded throughout the game. Anytime you see this symbol, and one of your tokens covers it, or one of your counters moves adjacent to this symbol on the board, then it's time to upgrade an action card. Do this by flipping one of the five action cards to its reverse pink side, making that action's ability stronger for the rest of the game. Now with the basics out of the way, let's take a look at the five actions in more detail. If a player chooses to build as an action, then they may build one building onto the zoo map, paying two coins per space that building covers. With this action, a player may build a standard enclosure, a pavilion, a kiosk, or a petting zoo. Any of the listed buildings that cover an equal number of spaces or less spaces than the value of the build action may be built. So for example, if a player chose to build and their build action card was underneath the four space on their zoo board, then a kiosk, pavilion, petting zoo, or standard enclosure size one, two, three, or four spaces could be built, but a five enclosure could not be chosen because it's greater than the value of the build action available. And remember, once an action card is chosen, it's placed on the one space underneath the zoo board, moving up each other card one space. So if you were to choose the build action again on your next turn, then only a one space building could be chosen. After a building is selected, it's placed on the player's zoo map. Now there's a few requirements when placing buildings on your map. Buildings must be adjacent to at least one previously played building. A building may never be placed over a rock or water space, and a building may not be placed in either of these locations until your build action card is upgraded. Finally, if a building is placed over any of these yellow icons on your zoo map, then claim the corresponding reward that's listed. When the build action card is upgraded, it allows that player to play multiple buildings that equal or are less than the strength of the action, and it allows that player to now build the large bird aviary and reptile house, along with all other previously allowed buildings. These buildings work in a similar way to the petting zoo, allowing multiple of the same types of animals to habitat one building. And when either of these buildings are played, any previously played bird or reptile that can live in these buildings can immediately be moved out of their previous enclosure to the matching building. Don't worry, this will make a little more sense when we get to the building requirements for animals. If the card's action is chosen, then that player may either draw a number of cards matching the strength of the action with the corresponding value on the action card, so in this case two cards will be drawn and one discarded, or if the card's action is under the five strength, then that player could instead do what is called snapping, which simply means they could draw exactly one card of the face-up cards from the display, replenishing it afterwards. But regardless of which of the two actions were chosen, before drawing cards, that player must advance the break token two spaces as indicated on the card. If the break token reaches the end of the track, then a break will happen at the end of that player's turn, but more on that later. When the card's action is upgraded, the number of cards that can be drawn with this action is increased, snapping can be done with a lower strength value, and cards can be drawn from the deck or from the cards in the display in that player's reputation range. Zoo cards are broken up into three types, and they're differentiated by colors. The blue cards are sponsor cards, which allow you to hire specialists and build unique structures for a reward. Green cards are conservation project cards that you can support to gain points on the conservation track. And orange cards are animal cards, and if you have a building to support them, they allow you to bring in certain animals to gain your zoo appeal points. Though these cards are very different, the cost to play each card is in the top left corner. Now the last three actions players can take each relate to one of each of the three types of cards. If the animal's action is chosen, that player can play a number of animal cards as shown on the action card, matching the strength of the action with the same number on the action card. Now despite being different, each animal card is organized the same way. In the top left corner is a cost to play an animal, in the top right corner is the animal's category and the continent where it originates, in the bottom right corner is any bonuses for playing each animal, and underneath each animal's name is each animal's effect, which activates only once when the animal card is played. Let's look at a few examples. If on my turn I wanted to play an animal card, and my animal action card was under the three strength spot, I would be able to play one animal card from my hand. Looking at my hand, I choose the reindeer, which costs 12 coins and requires a minimum enclosure size of three. Looking at the effect on the animal, it doesn't apply in this case, so I'd ignore that and move on to gaining five appeal points for having this reindeer in my zoo. Now some animals have multiple enclosure costs on the card. That's because the animal is able to go in a standard enclosure, 
or a special enclosure. For example, the Andean condor, which costs 17 coins and requires at least one other bird to be present in your zoo. This bird could habitat a five space enclosure, or if you had a large bird aviary in your zoo, it could be placed there instead, in which case it would only take up one space in that building. Regardless of what building an animal is placed in, any rock or water requirements need to be met. In this case, the building must be adjacent to at least one rock location on your zoo map. If the animal's action is upgraded, it allows that player to play a greater number of animal cards than the unupgraded side, and also players can now play animals from their hand or from the display on the board. To play a card from the display, any card within that player's reputation range may be chosen, and the cost on the chosen cards folder must be paid along with the cost of the animal card. If the sponsor's action is chosen, that player can play a total of one sponsor card from their hand as long as the strength of the action is equal or greater than the chosen card. Sponsor cards have one-time abilities when played, as indicated by a yellow border in the bottom left corner, end-of-game abilities as listed by a red border in the bottom right corner, and ongoing effects as listed in the card text and shown in a blue border at the top of the card as a reminder. So if I play the Expert on Europe card as an action, my sponsor's action card must be at a strength of 5. This card would give me a one played ability here, granting me one point for each Europe symbol from cards played. Once played, its ongoing ability would allow me to build a one space enclosure for free every time a Europe icon enters my zoo, including itself. And finally, at the end of the game, this card would allow me to gain one conservation point if I had at least five occupied one space enclosures. Some sponsor cards require a new building to be placed in that player's zoo. If the listed building can't be placed in that player's zoo, then the sponsor card may not be chosen. Now on the sponsor's card, you may have noticed this or on the card with more text below it. That's because if a player chose a sponsor's action and didn't want to play a sponsor's card, they could instead increase the break token, the value of the strength of the action, in this case four spaces, and gain an equal number of coins. If the sponsor's action is upgraded, it allows that player to play one or more sponsor cards from their hand or from their reputation range on the board again. The chosen card or multiple cards must equal or be less than the strength of the sponsor's action plus one. So six strength in this case. If the upgraded sponsor's action is chosen and that player chooses not to play a card, instead they move the break token a number of spaces as the strength of the action again, but now they gain double a number of coins as the strength of the action. Okay, so we made it through four of the five potential actions a player can take on their turn. Before going over the fifth action, I recommend you pause the video here, have a coffee, take a nap, do whatever you need to do to keep going, because the last action is quite a bit of rules we need to go over. Now assuming you pause the video, welcome back to Father of Games. Now we're going to go over the last action a player can take on their turn, that's to perform an association task. If a player chooses the association action on their turn, they may complete one association task. All association tasks are highlighted on the association board with a cost above it. The strength of the action must be equal to or greater than the cost of the task you want to complete, and all association tasks require one or two association workers to be sent to complete the action. Let's take a brief look at what each of these association tasks are. If a player chose the association action and the strength of the action was a two strength or higher, then the increasing reputation task could be completed, allowing that player to increase the reputation by two. If the association action was chosen and the strength of the action card was three or higher, then the gain a partner zoo task could be completed instead, allowing that player to choose a continent to partner with. The chosen token is placed on the highlighted spot at the bottom of that player's zoo map here, gaining that player any rewards listed. Partner zoos make it cost 3 coins less to play animals from the matching continent, and may count towards conservation project requirements. Players can never partner with the same continent more than once, and the last two spots on that player's board cannot be used until their association action card is upgraded. Now if the association action is chosen and the strength of the action was 4 or higher, then that player could complete the gain a partner university task. This allows that player to take one university token available and add it to the bottom most available spot on their board. These universities grant research icons that some cards require in their cause, like this monkey here that looks strangely like George R.R. R. Martin. Universities can also give that player reputation and potentially increase that player's hand size, but the size of each player's hand only matters when the break is triggered. Each player may only gain one of each different university token and the available tokens replenish after each break. Now if a player chose the association action and the strength of the action was 5, the conservation project work task could be completed. To do this, a player may support a conservation project already in play, or play one from their hand and support it as soon as it's played. To support a conservation project, you must meet the requirements on the card. 
in which case you choose one of the seven action cubes on your zoo map, gaining an instant reward and potentially a reward during each break, and cover up the icon on the conservation card that you completed, gaining the reward listed on the card. For example, the Species Diversity Project requires multiple animal categories in your zoo. If you met any of the requirements, in this case four different animal categories, you would cover up the requirement you completed and gain the conservation points listed below. You may never complete the same conservation project card twice. Once the association action is upgraded, that player may perform multiple association actions on their turn as long as the value of the actions don't exceed the strength of the action card and as long as they have enough association workers to complete each action. Conservation cards may now be played from the face-up display, remembering to pay the coin cost listed on the folder as well. And the last change to the upgraded association action is that players may now make exactly one donation at the end of their turn in which case they choose one token from their supply and place it at the left of the association board here on the lowest available spot, paying the coin cost listed and gaining one conservation point. Now throughout the game certain actions and cards will require you to break with a number beside it. When that happens you move this coffee cup, the designated number of spaces, closer to the break icon. When it reaches the end of the track, a break will start at the end of that player's turn. During a break, each player discards down to three cards, or five if they have this university in their zoo, Remove all tokens from action cards, refill all icons on the association board, and remove all association workers. Discard the lowest two cards on the face-up display, replenishing it afterwards, and after that, each player receives an income. Each pink hand icon grants that player the listed reward during each break. Also gain coins based on the value shown beside each player's counter on the appeal track. And finally, each kiosk grants that player one coin for each special enclosure, unique building, pavilion, or occupied standard enclosure that it's adjacent to. After all players have gathered their income, the break token returns to a starting place, and the player adjacent to the one who caused the break takes the next turn. Play continues this way until one player's appeal counter and conservation counter end up in the same scoring area or pass each other, in which case each other player is allowed one more turn until the scores are added up. To add up the scores, each player adds any end of game bonuses and final scoring cards to the conservation score now, and after that, add up the scores. First, each player needs to determine what's called their target number. To do this, each player locates a conservation counter on the board, and the lowest appeal value in that scoring area is that player's target number. The player who scores the highest on the appeal track above their target number wins the game. For example, if this is what the end of game looked like, the blue player's target score would be 79. If their appeal counter was at 85, their final score would be plus 6. Red's target number would be 91. If their appeal counter was only at 82, that would give them a final score of negative 9. In this case, the blue player would win the game. In the event of a tie, the player who supported the most conservation projects would win, and if there's still a tie, then the players share the victory. And that's how you play Arc Nova. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. I'll answer anything I can. Other than that, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.